another podunk American visits Edinburgh. Jekyll and Hyde of a city, new town merging into old, Lothian dividing into east and west, where reputation is everything and nothing. Founded on the firth of the river Forth, with heart of blood and fire and stone, built on battle and volcanic ash. My walk takes me from the castle to tartan touting tourist traps along the Royal Nile, into cobbles and closes, to the underground vaults, where Burke and Hare plied their inventive trade, amongst the city's destitute and long discarded souls, while above ground, the great and the good paraded their locally made finery. First world city of literature, from the Sir Walter Scott to the Burns Monument, Alexander McCall Smith sings its literary praises, but slip down a side street and I'm in a Rebus novel, as Rankin reveals the city's underbelly. Then wander through galleries for a dose of Scottish realism, gaze on Rayburn's The Skating Minister, and out to Saturday Night Wild as drunken louts from hen parties and football <coughs> matches pour from the raucous and ubiquitous pubs into the rain-washed streets. To the new parliament, exuberant edifice celebrating the birthplace of democracy. Okay, so I used to think that was Williamsburg. <laughs> as my practical <laughs> Scottish hosts observe, well, the architects from Spain so maybe it would look right in Madrid. But anyway, it's what goes on inside that matters. I scale the heights of Arthur's seat, craggy home of legends and little coffins, and hear the very stones cry out, stirring my ancestral, if middle-aged, blood. Then cry like a fool on the tour bus after viewing the site of the massacre of Glencoe, where my kinsmen slaughtered by murder under trust as their enemies demanded highland hospitality for 11 days, drank their wine, devoured their food, then rose up on the 12th day for the slaughter. For cruel is the snow that sweeps Glencoe and covers the graves of Donald. And finally understand why, when my great aunt Euphemia stood on the courthouse steps of Burlingame, Kansas, after my great uncles refused to join the miners' strike, shook her fist <laughs> in the air and sang, fire in the glen, fire in the glen, but no fire in the eyes of our highland men. <laughs> and why they said, oh, Effie, get away with you, but then slunk off one by one to join the fight. <laughs>